Hey YouTube, I just realized that I've spent the past year making a Hackintosh computer and getting all the software for it, but I haven't made a single video to record my achievement. So I'm going to give you a quick run through of what I did, and more importantly what I have to show for it, and how much money I've saved. I'll give you a quick run through of what I started off with, and give you a really fast tutorial on what I did with it to get a basic Hackintosh computer up and running. Now of course the process differs slightly from computer to computer, but you can still safely say that there's four basic things you will always need to do this. First thing you're going to need is a computer. I'd recommend the Acer Aspire 1 netbook as it is small, fast, and lightweight, and all the drivers to get it working are readily available online. The next thing you're going to need is a patched Leopard install disk that will install on a Windows computer. If you're new at this, I'd recommend the Callaway 10.5.2 disk as there's little chance you'll screw it up. For more of a challenge and a more up-to-date system, I would recommend the IATCOS 5i 10.5.5 disk. But I did screw up my system badly twice trying to install this one. I guess the third time was the charm for me, so back up any important files if you plan to use this build. The third thing you're going to need is a partition manager, something that will split your hard drive. For example, I used Partition Magic. The fourth and final thing you're going to need is a bunch of files known as texts. These support the devices and hardware for your computer, and are specific to each computer type, so we won't get into them with too much detail, but I have put some links at the side of this video that will help you find the ones that work right with your computer. If you plan on using your Hackintosh for a long period of time, I recommend buying a legitimate copy of Leopard, because making a Hackintosh computer is technically illegal, so by purchasing it, you can at least say that you paid for what you got. Don't worry, your savings will still be through the roof. Once you have those four things, you're ready to begin. The first step is partitioning your hard drive. So open up your partition management program and create a new partition of at least 20 gig. Note, this partition must be in FAT32 format or Mac won't be able to read it during installation. You'll see that my hard drive is already partitioned and that I've given the majority of the free space to Mac. How much space each OS gets is a choice that's up to you. If you plan on only using Windows when you absolutely have to, I'd recommend giving more free space to Mac because Mac is kind of space intensive compared to Windows and the programs are a lot larger in size. If you've gotten this far without any hangups, you're ready to install Mac. If you hear the snag, feel free to email me or post a comment and I'll see what I can do about helping you. Installing Mac is another process that will differ greatly depending on the computer you're trying to install it on. And I'd like to note two things here. One, this is the step that can make or break your entire system, so make sure that you get all of your information straight and make a system backup before proceeding. Two, while I will usually help in any way that I can, I must point out that I will not be held liable for any of the things you do as you perform the tasks in this guide at your own risk. Once you insert and boot the Mac install disk, you'll get this really fast scrolling slightly scary text. Don't even worry about it, it's normal. You're all set. Alright guys, here's the fun part. Now we install Mac. For better video quality, I'm not doing a boot disk install, but this does not change the procedure. Another change is the fact that I'm using the IPC 10.5.6 install disk. I didn't mention this one before because it wasn't available at the time I made that part of the video. Don't worry, everything else in the install is the same, unless I point out otherwise. The next thing you need to do is go to the Tools menu and find the Disk Utility. Once there, highlight the partition on the sidebar that you wish to install Mac on. Select the Erase tab from the side. Under Volume Format, make sure that Mac OS Extended Journaled is selected. Hit the Erase button, and hit the Erase button again. Once this process is completed, close the disk utility. Let's continue. Next, you will come to the Software License Agreement page. I would honestly recommend you read it because it gives you some tips on what you can do to fix certain issues should they arise. When you've read through it, click Continue. Next, you'll be asked to choose your install location. If it isn't already selected, hit the Change Install Location button. Now I'm installing Mac on my external hard drive, as my internal is working fine. But if you want to install in an external, it's an option that ensures you won't screw up your computer. Once you've chosen an install location, hit Customize. Hey guys, um, I hope you found my tutorial useful so far. 
Unfortunately, I'm currently unable to finish the tutorial as I am currently in the process of moving. Uh, and I've packed up my CD drive and my CDs, so I can't properly go through the customization process with you. Um, what I recommend you do instead is stop after you've partitioned your hard drive in Windows. So that will leave you with a working system and you'll have one of the steps complete. So that's the best compromise I got for you. I hope you all anxiously await the rest of the tutorial and I'll talk to you later.